images here are astonishing. Thousands, if not hundreds of thousands of dead fish. Red tide is wreaking havoc on the Bay Area. Thousands of dead fish, one of the worst red tide blooms to ever impact Tampa Bay. Is there anything the state can do about it? There doesn't seem to be an end for red tide. Environmentalists say commercial development is certainly feeding it. Waves of dead fish. The longer the fish rot, the more fuel they provide for the red tide bloom. Researchers say there's nothing unusual about this bloom. What we're experiencing right now in the Bay when it comes to fish kills and red tides is something that I've never seen anything remotely close to. Um, the amount of death and the amount of uh, just sea life, marine life, that's bird life now we're hearing that is washing up dead, found dead. Uh, it's astronomical, you can't even wrap your brain around it. Um, as we speak now, we've picked up 800 tons of dead sea life along the shorelines in St. Pete, Tampa. I've been here my whole life and Anecdotally, from my perspective, I've never seen anything like this in Tampa Bay. What makes intense red tide blooms is when that naturally occurring organism interacts with human sources of pollution. This year, there's a few key things that happened. We've had some wind patterns that didn't do us any favors. We've had really dry spring, which made Tampa Bay very salty. Um, but I think it's really important to note that back uh, in early April, we saw a really significant spill of nutrients into Tampa Bay. And of course I'm talking about Piney Point and the process water that was discharged from that facility over the period of about 10 days. 215 million gallons is going to push any estuary over the top when it comes to nutrient load. We also have over fertilized yards, we have over fertilized golf courses, uh, sewage leaks, when it rains all that stuff ends up in the bay as well. As a guide, when you have a fish kill like this, nobody wants to go in the water. I mean, it, it's a trickle effect. You know, everything revolves around this waterway and this estuary. And if it's dead, then everything dies with it. A lot of guides have been uh, hired out as subcontractors to pick up uh, a lot of the dead fish. Either all of the fish die or the red tide's over, and those subcontracting jobs are over, and there's hardly any sea life left in the, in the bay. What are those guides going to do? It's really hard to see the black tip sharks, the, the dolphins, the manatees, the tarpon, the snook, you know, all the things that, you know, people are usually out there fishing for fun or spotting or, you know, whatever it is that, that you love about Tampa Bay, you're probably seeing it dead right now. Marine life that doesn't have a voice, you feel awful for them, they can't do anything. A lot of them were stuck in Tampa Bay, breathing this horrible mess that's there. Um, and can't get away from it. You see redfish slowly dying in front of your face, uh, suffocating. It's, it's horrible, and it, it, every day that you see it, it, it digs a little bit deeper. When they say that red tide is a natural occurrence, Chris Whitman with Cabinets for Clean Water said at best, yeah, forest fires are natural too, until you start putting fuel on them. Then it's not natural anymore, and then you have a problem. Um, and that's where we are right now. We're asking for your help now because we know that when Tampa Bay was declared dead once before, um, the reason it got back from the brink was because people stood up and they demanded better from elected officials. And that's what got delivered. This group rallying Saturday is calling for immediate action. They're demanding accountability. And we need to do that again. You know, the estuary program is celebrating our 30th anniversary. And I got to tell you, frankly, this is not a fun way to celebrate it. So a lot of people, <clears throat> whether it's social media, whether it's uh, word of mouth, they want to know, is anybody holding those people accountable? Tampa Bay Waterkeeper is. Any kind of violation of Clean Water Act, that's what we, who we go after. So we currently have a lawsuit against Piney Point, against HRK Holdings, against the uh, FDEP and the state of Florida for their mismanagement of the gyp stack at Piney Point. Word of mouth, spreading the message, saying the story, telling people about this video, telling people about what is going on in Tampa. That is the immediate, because we need the state's help for funding for helping clean this up. Please visit our website, check us out on social media. Uh, we'd love to help you get to know the Bay better. If you want to find out more about what is happening in Tampa Bay, you can go to tampabaywaterkeeper.org, or you can follow us on social media, Facebook or Instagram.